It's pretty cool that you have me here to like, you know, give, give bad takes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right. So uh, we're here with the. Uh, so we did do uh, last episode, which is I think seven. So we're gonna do a little bit of seven, a little bit of eight. Finish They're it all up. Really, one episode. You know. That's you know what. That's that's, that's my take. My take was that like, they were good. Both of them were really good. But if they were together, that would have been great. Either way, they were great, but. Um, so we're going to go around. We have everybody here. It's a special day for Wednesday. Um, there's going to be a ton of spoilers I'm here. What's that? It's also special because I'm here and I haven't been here like all season. So well, yeah, so, something like that. So, um, there's going to be a ton of spoilers. Uh, this will be up on YouTube tomorrow, I think. Yeah. So, but there's, you know, if you didn't watch it, obviously, Stay away. Um, so we're going to go around. We'll start if you with. I haven't watched it. Run now. Yeah, if you haven't watched it, I mean, we're what? Uh, a minute and a half in now. So this is a good time to go and go watch it and then come watch the show. Um, so let's just go around the room quickly for episode seven, if you guys can remember it. Um, mm. Let's just give it a rating out of 10. Uh, we're not going to get into like why you give it a number, and then we'll talk about we'll talk about it, uh, and then we'll go into uh, episode eight. And we'll give ratings for eight, and then uh, we'll talk about that. So uh, why don't we start with uh, you, Tony, since you've been gone for a couple of weeks here? Yeah. Um, so episode seven, uh, I watched that like a couple of days ago, but I I watched the. Late, I, I watched the season finale today, so it's kind of kind of mesh. So you gotta have to kind of like um, remind me if I'm wrong here. But that's when Grogu got his like uh, crane thing, right? Like where he's like in that little thing and he's doing all that stuff, right? Was that seven? That happens at seven. Okay, good. That's okay. a good analogy. Okay. I didn't even think about that. Crane, <laughs> well, crane, right? I saw the I saw the meme, so you know I can't take credit for it. You know what I'm saying? But. Um, honestly, you know, all, the thing is, I was really hoping he was going to get like a little Mando set on him, you know, like it'd be way too early, could... way too early. For yeah. That. Well, well, what people were saying was once he was in the IG 88 suit or the IG 11 suit mm-hmm. was to put the Mandalorian armor over that. So he really would be like Kang, like in the, yeah. in yeah. the Android body. Kang, yes. Yeah. 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 That, that would be cool. But yeah, no, I, I thought it was good. I mean, I keep reading these things and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I keep reading these rumors that uh, pa- pa- uh, Pascal there is like getting fighting with Disney. So that's why he's not in a lot of these episodes, but I feel well, like he's still, listen, we'll get into that. Just give me a rating. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. he has a very number rating. <laughs> right. going on, I, on like three tangents. I was just kind of trying to get my bearings. I haven't been on here, and I don't want to give too hot of takes like right off the bat, you know? Um, I would say like an eight. I okay. Liked it. All right, Dan? Uh, circle back to me. Trust me. Circle back to you for the yeah. episode? For the, ra- for the rating, yeah. Tr- trust the process? Okay. Trust I, the process. I'll, I'll, I'll go. I want Jack to go last since he's our resident Jedi. Um, yeah. But... I guess <laughs> I guess we'll circle back to you. Uh, I'll go with me. I'll say an eight, um, an eight for last episode. I really liked. Um, that was the one the, the the them getting back on Mando. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was awesome. Um, yeah. So an eight. Um, I guess we'll go with uh, Jack next. I'm uh, probably like an eight and a half maybe almost nine um just them reintroducing so many things on mandalore was very very cool like every time they're kind of like going back into mandalore like you know the dome city stuff it's like oh wow like this is what it was in the clone wars um kind of ish in 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 rebels but really getting to see that again they did a really good job with that um yeah, I, I just I just love the direction that they've they, they've been going with them going back to Mandalore. Awesome. Yep. Yep. So I think we're all good on like eight, like eight, nine across the board. Uh, so Dan, you want to like you want us to talk about 
do you want to circle so, back later? So, yeah. Well, so the reason to, to circle back is because you were doing the ratings for episode seven and then going into doing the ratings for episode eight. I, because of after watching episode seven last week, figured, okay, there, this is going to be a, a two-part finale. So when I watched today's episode, I watched them both. I rewatched episode seven directly into episode eight. Mm. Which, which, wh- and, and which is what should have been done because okay. to me, it gives them both essentially, especially if you take them in one episode, a 10. Yeah. If you consider it one episode, like if you rewatch seven directly into eight and it, take it as one episode, no, I is, agree. Yeah, that's, that's what, it, yeah, that's what, yeah. that's what it should have been, really. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I agree with you on that. Um, but if you had when you when you broke it down, because we didn't talk about you know, let's just pretend we didn't see it, it when you saw seven. I mean, it was it was probably like what a nine for you then, like a, a nine or okay. like an eight and a half, a nine, yeah. Okay, okay, which is fair. I think um, you know, I think uh, the episode was great. There was a lot, you know, and it, it felt yeah. it felt like there was a lot, and it was short. It felt like to me, maybe because I was like. On the edge of my seat, you know, you were immersed in it. I mean, yeah, that was yeah. the longest. That was the longest episode, I think. Of yeah, the it was one of the longest yeah. episodes. Wow. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, but so it had it had a lot, but like I said, that's the thing. Like individually, I would probably give each of them like an eight and a half, but together as one story mm-hmm. is a ten. Okay. Well. You know, I haven't been here in a while, so I just I kind of give you my refresh of the season. Can we do that, like, real quick? You know, since yeah, we yeah, yeah, since you haven't been here, but listen, yeah. let's not go on a tangent of like some hot take <laughs> garbage stuff. You know what I mean? Because I've been dealing with I'm a like, lot. Of known I've for. been dealing with a lot of that in Overwatch too. So how about <laughs> we just you know reasonable. You can't project that onto me though. You know what I'm saying? Hot, hot takes. Overwatch two is garbage. Why are you playing it? Uh, because I enjoy garbage. How about that? Okay. So then I can, so then I can do my garbage. If you enjoy <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be here all night. You know what I mean? So let, oh, let's no, go. Make, go ahead. Go ahead. Make it yeah, go ahead. I'm Three hour quick. finale, longer than the show. Okay. So first, first thing, thing is, is Jar Jar back in black. You know what I'm saying? So we're, I was right about a lot of the, all the stuff is all coming together. You know what I'm saying? So I just want I, I just want when pro, when when props are due. They should be given out. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tony, you were like hella right about that. And I said, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Even a, even, a, even a blind squirrel gets a nut, you know what I'm saying? Every once in a while. So, right? so wait, so you're trying to say that your prediction of Jar Jar Big showing up because the same actor who played Jar Jar showed up in a different role, your prediction is still right? Yeah, because think about it. All right, this. stop this man talking. Let's go on to something else. Hold on. Yeah, so are we going to recap or are we just going to like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Recap. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, no. So um, I watched the shows like that you guys were doing um, after I watched my show. So I watched the episode. So I didn't get like kind of like spoilers or whatever. But I think that this season, um, doing the whole thing with like uh, Bo Katan and stuff like that has been like sick. Like the whole Mando thing, like seeing the. The big like uh, what's the beast theme? Like the, the they're like store? yeah, seeing seeing that and then like her getting like reintroduced into the faith and um, then like walking the line of like being able to take the helmet off and be the leader stuff was like super cool. Like so, I want to ask you a question since you weren't here. Did yeah. you think that she like the the armor, uh, the armor she, like she was kind of like playing the line or like like it felt like she was being kind of like you know devious in in some of the things she was doing and then obviously i just think i think she's just stoic right so like when she says things it's like you take it for what it is but if i can kind of see what you mean by that but like you know it's like kind of like she's a pro like almost a prophet you know what i mean like she's like the wise one like the wise shaman you know what i mean so like mm-hmm. yeah. when they give you when they give you wisdom, right? Like think about like the Hobbit, like that uh, the, the last show there. Um, the what was the last show? The, the Lord of the Rings one, and they had the little um, the little leader Hobbit, you know, the little the older uh, black guy, 
and mm-hmm. he was like always speaking in these like the stars and stuff like that but like just wisdom you know so you take it for what it is like it, yeah it, do you mean that like she was kind of like playing well people, that, like you so dan and i and i don't know if jack was in here for that show or we, maybe we mentioned it but like it felt like she was kind of like like teetering towards like leading in in a way of I, I don't know there's some kind of mystery behind it but then obviously watching this you know she was you know she's Dude, battling she's with them yeah she was beating you know she's Dude, the you know, fact that she's using the the things to make right like her her tools to like cook people yeah that was awesome yeah and I can, what I'm gonna tell you about this is that every episode felt like a movie. Like, the, the, it was just so well done. You know what I mean? Like, the graphics, the CGI. Like, I felt like you go back and watch, like, the newer movies and stuff like that. And it's just like, it felt like you were getting that production, even though it was only 30 minutes or, or 51 minutes or whatever. And that was like, you know, I think that's I think, what really draws me to this, uh, like, to this series now. Like, one, I it was the one characters of the, before. Yeah. But now one, it's like. One of the recap things I think that I want to just kind of lightly touch on before we get into episode eight is I think that that kind of episode where they were on uh, Corson and it was like that that episode feels kind of out of place until this eighth episode right where uh, Mo- uh Moff Gideon is talking about maybe it was the end of seven where he was, was talking seven. yeah seven where he was like it, where they were talking about the count the council the shadow, shadows, council. shadow council mm-hmm. where That's he was awesome. like uh like the the cloning thing, the kind of you're like, well, where where is that going to go? Where is that going to go? And then seven, and then eight, you see it in eight, which I was going to make the graphic that hallway of the, all of the Moff Gideons, mm-hmm. but I think uh, that's way too much of a spoiler, <laughs> and and I don't want to, <laughs> I don't, I don't want our central theme on Moff, I, even though he's a great, the actor is great, right, and he he does a great job. I just didn't want to, I I put his, I had to put his face up on the graphic today, but um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think that you, you, that that episode, you're like, I love that episode because you saw a different side of, of the story building, right? And but then it pays it pays out on you know the end of seven, the beginning of eight, or the all of eight, which was uh, you know I want to I want to get into eight. Are you good on your recap, Tom? Are you got any? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. yeah. No, that was that was really. Uh, I, I can I yeah, can the book uh, ten. Yeah, I, I really yeah. liked the story arc of Boca ten. Now. Jack, this might be a little bit different for you because you saw her in what was it, Rebels, like the show, Clone Wars and Cl- then Rebels. Yeah, and I didn't watch those, so you know, I was like, to see her story from mm-hmm. someone that didn't watch any of that, it was like awesome to see that, right? So it might have been a different experience for someone that has seen her before, right? I think it's even more awesome, right? That's what I Clone Wars and yeah. then Rebels yeah. puts like an exclamation arc on her, yeah. Yeah, I, I I love Bo-Katan's arc, and especially now throughout the season of the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, I think I think oh, well, one perfect actress for that, right? Like I think she embodies like yeah. that, right? And then she she was also the voice in voice. Clone oh, Wars. That's, and that's Rebels, awesome. So. That's yeah, see, yeah, that's yeah. that's awesome. Better. I love that. Um, the only thing, okay, the only smit like smudge mark I have on episode seven. Which is a good thing and it's a bad thing, right? Before we get into it, is the Thrawn part, right? Like, why are you speaking for Thrawn? Uh, and mm-hmm. like, like, wh- why isn't he shown his face? Like, they give us a little tease, right? And then we're like, oh, we're definitely gonna <laughs> see him in eight. Like, we're gonna see like no. maybe him just stand, maybe just standing there, like uh, no. a, a thing from behind. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, Jack. Come on, man. Because they need the open trailer. Right, but that's what I'm saying. I thought they were going to do something with Ahsoka, and I thought that's what they were going to do, was him just, like, standing there, and, like, this would have been cool, right? Uh, well, I'm not going to get crazy, but if they, like, uh, like the projector thing started, and it, and he was, like, stepping up to it, and then they cut it off. Like, that he was about to talk or walk, or, like, him walking towards it or something. I thought that would have mm. been something that would have been cool to lead up to Ahsoka, but you know, I'm not a writer. You know, I don't get paid the millions to do it. So, yeah, no, I yeah, think I think, that, I think they did it the right way, right, Jack? 
Yeah. Well, I think, um, listen, mentioning Thrawn, like they're talking about, you know, that the, he's, you know, the quote unquote heir to the empire. Um, like there's some, some of the comics are called that around Thrawn. Um, and, you know, I think honestly, even with the way that they end eight ties in kind of well with what we can kind of assume with Ahsoka, because we know that we're going to get Thrawn there. Um, mm -hmm. Who is also going to be played by the voice actor from the, yes, the series? Yes, he is. Oh, great. Um, and um, and again, without getting into eight too much yet, um, how they ended it with with Din going to um, the New Republic and being like, "Hey, I want to do independent contracting because you guys don't have the manpower to handle the Outer Rim, and there's a lot of you know Imperial remnant there." With Ahsoka hunting, with Ahsoka still dealing with Thrawn, she is also then dealing with Imperial remnant. Yeah. So there is that tie in there is where um kind of where I'm seeing that. Um I think mentioning Thrawn is valid because I, he's he's going to be kind of like the center focus for whatever Imperial Remnant warlords are left. So mm -hmm. did we want to see yeah. him though at all? No. I, I just I, I listen, I would have liked it because I think <laughs> Thrawn's a baller. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, it, it was the type of thing it would have been good to see for the, the fan service aspect, but also the way they did it without doing too much, where, like, yeah, he's mentioned, you know it's going to be coming, you know with Ahsoka coming, it's going to be coming, but this, like, end of this little arc here, because we already know we're getting a Mandalorian Season 4, they already confirmed that, Yeah, you know? This little, like, this ends, like, this little bit of arc ties up some of the the plot lines and stories that have been going even since season one with like why Gideon wanted Grogu and stuff. Yep. And then gives them like a little bit of like a, like a rest, like a little bit of like a respite, you know, where he, at the end where he's just going to actually start doing certain things. Yeah. You know, he's got, hold, he's hold got his little second. plot. Hold on a second, a second. It's, it's like a good thing. I the, think that the, they didn't push it. A lot. So he, he wanted, uh, so Moff Gideon wanted. I mean, obviously everyone. He he wanted uh, uh, Grogu, so because he wanted to extract the Force out of him to put it into his yeah. clones. Okay. Into his clones. Yeah. yeah. He 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 wanted to get the Force. That's that's the piece he was missing to make his clones perfect in his eyes. So okay. let's get let's get into let's get into Episode Eight then. Yeah, because that's <laughs> yeah, cause that's like right in the and that's like towards the end, which is like. What, what do we got to get into? Right, so why don't we why don't we give the rating first? Okay, yeah, um, let's start it the same order. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, um, I thought it was like a nine and a half, if not a like a, if not a ten, ten only for like one or two reasons, but I think like high up there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dan, we don't have to circle back to you. Go ahead. And the like I said before, together, you know, a ten. Probably eight and a half, nine by itself, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was so good. Like there was so much about it that was so good. Yeah, I would say same nine and a half, um, probably ten, nine and a half. Um, yeah, I think uh, there was just one thing that I think that we'll get into it, but I, I, nine and a half, uh, Jack. Yeah, I mean, I would also say like nine and a half solely because I'm not in my mind. I'm not just like the episode was completely perfect. I don't have any gripes with it. I think it was awesome and it was amazing. But something about it wasn't just like, OK, it wasn't a complete 10. I think putting those episodes <laughs> together makes sense. But yeah, you know, I, 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 you know what? Let I me mean, start. I, I think the episode ended and I was like, that was incredible. They checked mm -hmm. so many boxes that they needed to to wrap stuff up and to set up future stuff, which I yeah. think did extremely, extremely well. Yeah. Right. The, the, I'm only, I'm, I want to start with the gripe that I had just for that we could get it out of the way because, like I said, I think the episode, like I said, it was very close to a 10. The only thing, and it's just a personal thing, obviously, I, the writers are doing a phenomenal job. The only thing that I had a, a problem with is, like, how it ended. Like, and there was no, like, kind of like post credit or something that led to the next thing that we like next story building. Hey, because yo, this guy watches Marvel movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, I, see I, that, that's the thing. That's like I was saying, like you for Marvel fan service wise, a post credit of like say Thorn on his ship or whatever. 
Not even that. Like, I just oh, needed like, whatever. I, some kind of post credit thing, like you know, Stinger would have been like fan service good, but for the story, like leaving it off like that, where it seems like you know things are just good. Dinjarin's, yeah, Dinjarin's. We can't yeah, do good. His new, his new <laughs> son, his new adopted son. He's living his best life. Listen, on Navarro, we you can't. Know, we can't. He's, he's gonna we can't be, do good. We need well, a that, little bad. Well, that's the thing, and I think that's why they did that perfectly. They gave him the good, and then season four and everything that's coming up, that's going to lead into the bad. Like, he's going to have that taste of the good, and then something's going to happen. You yeah. know, this is my my prediction going forward. Something's going to happen, and the good's going to get ripped away. And you know, oh, well, good prediction, Dan. Golly. Come mm-hmm. on, man. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I think, like, it was Listen, just... Mandalorian season four could just never have <laughs> Din again. It could just be following Bo-Katan. You never know. Yeah, that wouldn't be the Mandalorian then, right? Well, I was. How do you know who is the Mandalorian? Jar Jar. So Jar Jar. So I was kind of thinking that at the end of it, you'd be like, "Oh wow, they like actually wrapped it up, and there's no like bad evil thing looming." But it's about time. Yeah. Star then, Wars, like technically, Star there's Wars still games, there's a bit. Is, yeah, I mean, of course, there's a bit. Like, yeah, there's still a bunch of imperial warlords running around. They're we still thrown out there. Yeah, sure. yeah. We we know the future, like, but just what they gave us at the very end of the episode, Star Wars has always been a tragedy. That's true. Mm-hmm. Four, four, five, and six. You know, okay, that was its own story, but then they started bringing it, like, one, two, and three. Clone Wars. Listen, you're watching. It's also like, oh, I love these characters, but you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> That's true. You know That's what's true. coming. Yeah. Right. And then they did seven, eight, nine. You're like, oh, all this awesome stuff is happening, but yeah. you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> and yeah. so it's always leading to this dreary, unfortunate end. And so we finally had to like, oh, yeah. things actually can go well here. And I think that that mm-hmm. was totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, like, rarely does anyone in the universe get peace. Yeah, like, like feed feed up, enjoying the you know the scenery. Did you guys see Thanos yeah. next sit next to him? Too? <laughs> yeah. uh, let, let, let him enjoy sitting back, looking at the the scenery. Watch, watch, yeah, watching his watching his son lift a frog with the force. You know. Some, give, give him his moment. <laughs> I know, I know. I just, I just like a little, a little cloud on the, in the sky. Yeah, you know, just, I, it's just, I, I get it. It's just something almost expected, especially. Oh, this is a Disney thing. It's close enough to Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That that's true. I that, and that's like I said. That's the only gripe I had. I was yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, everything else I thought was great. The fight scenes now. In the graphic, I put one of the uh, guards up there because I do want to talk about that a little bit, right? So, right. what? It, and 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 I watched some videos, but I didn't want to like get someone else's idea, right? What is that? that so th- that guard is the, those are the same guards that Snook Snook had, right? That Ray yeah. and okay. okay, okay. So yeah. what was the? I saw something about the uh, the the uh, lightsaber, not the lightsabers, the uh, the blades that they were using. Um, mm-hmm. What is the significance behind those? And like, I, honestly, I think the reason why I put them on the, these guys on the graphic is because I felt like there was something important there that I missed. So maybe someone that has a little bit more knowledge, or maybe someone that thinks can see it at a different angle. But like, what? Obviously, introducing them and they were talked about. Then they were shown in two separate occasions. Uh, is there a significance to that, or am I just kind of looking into that a little too much? I think it's looking in a little too much. Um, I think it was more so just a nod, like little context to Praetorian guards, like they're essentially the predecessor of like the red guard that palpatine had okay mm-hmm. we never really got to see any of them in action in like you know canon stuff or whatever but they're supposed to be some of the best warriors in the galaxy they're you know chancellor palpatine's personal guard so they're all supposed to be like insanely 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 um skilled warriors and this and this and that okay yeah and all, all their weapons are based on like the the vibro blade technology yeah ba- basically weapons that are designed to be able to fight against lightsabers. Okay. Well, that's what I was trying to, that's what I was like. Okay. Um, 
what what is the significance behind that and is there is there any like kind of different meaning to it but i i did like to see them you know in action uh i mean they they kind of killed a couple a couple big guys there right so and, and they and they worked a lot of uh, and while we're still in this and then while we're still in this area shout out to my boy paz Vizla. yeah seriously mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Rest peace. Bro, that man is a g bro he saw the praetorian come out he said come get her <laughs> yeah that was that was awesome shout out to my boy paz Vizla. That's mm-hmm. the best way to die in the Star Wars universe. You know, you're going down. <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah. like you're not like on your knees. Like, don't behead me. It's like I'm fighting. I'm I'm pulling out my. I don't care. You know, I'm pulling my little blade, and my shield, and we're going this to the end. And he was working those. Uh, now, yeah. what, what 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 do you call those? They're not stormtroopers. They're not they're not clones, right? They're what are what were those ones with the uh, Vescar? On? Is- they're just Imperials. Uh, Imperials, they're, okay. He they're, was they're just, working. It. I love that just, tech, that uh, they're weapon. They're just juiced up uh, stormtroopers. You know what? He reminded me of Winston a little bit with that cannon. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, As we, yeah. he, put, he pushes the last two off the, off the thing. <laughs> yeah. Play with the game. Play with the game. <laughs> Instead of do that monkey really... song and make it a short, uh, yeah, that yeah. monkey song. I don't even know what I was thinking, but but yeah, no, this um, like they did such a good job with his character introducing him. They, like, oh, he's a Vizsla, you know. There's some significance to that, and 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 whatever, blah blah blah. Um, but just kind of how they even built his character, like even in um, I think it was episode five or six with um, when they went to deal with the pirates on Navarro, um, and they're like, hey, you know, like I get. Um, if you guys don't want to come, but listen, like I'm, I'm asking you guys to come help. And the man says, I have something to say. And he gets up and it sounds like he's ragging. And he's like, why would we risk our lives? Everyone's quiet. He's like, because we're Mandalorians. I'm like, yo, this man is such a G. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. About what he, so they did just such a good job of bringing his character full circle. I just, I, I just had to throw that in there. Cause I think they did such an amazing job with his character from start to end. I think it's even just the perfect way for him to die. Like, I don't yeah. think Paz Vizla himself would have written that any different. Yeah. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of that, do you guys know who Paz Vizla is? No. Isn't it the, the guy that wrote the series? Jo- right? John Favreau. Is it? Oh, John Favreau. <laughs> yeah. That's happy, awesome. happy, happy Hogan slash the dude who literally was the producer and everything for Avengers, Spider-Man, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, and then created, you know, The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Just, that that's awesome that's well you know what that i mean you know the thing about when they have their helmets on and like you can just kind of read their emotion like that is just like i think that's some powerful stuff right like you're getting mm-hmm. like you can't see his face but you can yeah. you, you you can feel like i'm gonna die on this hill type of thing right like just by little subtle actions and you know things like that and like even the um I, I I forgot his name, but the the one that she fought uh, for the, the oh. mercenaries, yeah, and he like how he was stoic with his like you know getting the ship and crashing it in, and you know like I, I honestly mm-hmm. I think the characters were just so uh, the acting was so well done that you can like start building like for these mm-hmm. characters, right? Like if they did a little episode on him and a little bit about his backstory. I wouldn't mind something like that because there was so, there was a little depth to it, and I think he it just portrayed it well. And he kind of looked like a, a younger version or like a, a, a Jango Fat a little bit, a Jango, or yeah, the one the the original one, right? Kind of looked like him with that that Australian look or whatever. So I think it was pretty cool. I think um, I this is what I have to say about like this Mando series is that. I'm not a big, like, Mandalorian person. Like, I never, like, you know, I thought the clone thing was cool. And, like, and, you know, in the games that we played, they weren't, like, awesome characters. Because, you know, I think I could speak for Mike on this. We're about, the, like, the Force, you know, Star Wars is the Force and stuff. But it's changed my perspective on like, oh, yeah. how I appreciate other characters now. You know, you know what? what? I, I say that as, a like, a casual fan of Star Wars. Someone that, like I said, like, we watch the movies right and that's probably the furthest it goes and then obviously like andor mm-hmm. and these movies. but like for somebody like a casual fan like myself 
like opening up the world to these different characters like in Andor, like that whole spy thing that was awesome, right? And like this whole uh the whole Mando thing is awesome. Like you're you're learning about other races and you're like, wow, like I can understand why people can get in, in depth with these like the lore and everything. You know, obviously coming from someone that's like, oh, I just like, you know, I, we were uh, attracted to the, sh- the the movies because of the force and, you know, the dark side, light side thing and, you know, space magic and stuff. But like something like a show like this really like gets you like, I mean, they're, they're, don't don't get me wrong. They use the force with Grogu and stuff like that. But I think, you know, that that's like a, a subplot to something it's that's not much. Of, right, right. And I think. I think the John Favreau and uh, who's the other writer that you guys talk about, David? Uh, David, David Filoni. Yeah, my God, they just like they're creating new like fans to like Star Wars, and it, they're not doing it with like lightsabers and and uh, you know Darth <laughs> Vader and stuff like that, which is I think is phenomenal. Yeah. Dave, Dave Filoni might be the greatest thing to ever happen to Star Wars. Well, I, let's. I don't, I'm, I'm might is might is generous. <laughs> that man is incredible. So let me ask yeah. you this: and since we're on that topic, he's going to write a movie, right? Or is he's doing the next yeah. trilogy, or is he doing a solo movie? He's doing a solo. So far, he's doing a solo movie based on this timeline. Okay. Based on, like the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Skeleton Crew, like this area. So he's let doing me... a movie that's going to be like uh, the penultimate, like conclusion of it. So let me ask you this: going based on what he's doing now and what he's done before, those movies better be bomb. Th- those, be- not bombs. Like they better be really good, right? Because like, if they're yeah. not, are they? Is it going to skew? Like, because it. I, is it- there's just, no way they're not going to be good. Right, because with a bigger There's budget no and stuff like it's that. Not, yeah. I mean, his track record is, like, late. Like, yeah. flawless. His, his track record is director and writer of, like, you know, Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, the Ahsoka show coming out, Rebels, Clone Wars, Bad Batch, Tales of the Jedi. Like... Yeah. So he just gets it. And he's, like, the heir apparent to... Uh, Lucas, right? Is that what? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. I mean, I, the, the only thing is, and, and obviously, I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade, but like, I don't want him to do a movie and you're just like, oh, what was that? You know what I mean? Because like, he's doing so great with the shows that you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then you get to it and you're like, eh, like it was good, but it was just like, you didn't like, because you know, when you, when you trade a show to a movie, it kind of changes, right? Because there's like different ways, different styles of cinematography and stuff like that. I mean, with Star Wars, it's very. I, I like how they you can do, in the show, like when they do the the you know screen turnovers and stuff. It's just like the movies and stuff. So I, I really like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I just you know I, I just don't I, you, like the Marvel movies, right? You get your hopes up and you're like, eh, like that was okay, you know, like uh, that's just the trend of what with Disney, how it's been going with the Marvel movies. I just don't want to happen with like Star Wars because Star Wars has been trending up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I don't think, and like, this is one of those things where I try to be like, you know, going to see Marvel movies and things. I try to like not get hopes up thing, like things like that. It would be a major shock to me if the movie that he's in charge of at the end of this wasn't great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, there's, to me, there's no way he can fail. Well, okay. Okay. Listen, I, I, that, I again, that... there's no, like, there is <laughs> nothing that he's been a part of that has failed. I, that, and that's why I'm saying, like, that's that's a scary part, right? Like when you're a, when you're a hundred percent win ratio, right? And you go into a game yeah. and you're like, damn, like you, you in the back of your mind, you're like, I mean, the mindset is like, I'm winning everything, I don't care. But you know, at some point, you gotta lose. And all I'm saying is, how I, I don't I don't know uh, if he can lose. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. No, I'm just saying. I, I like, just, that's what I'm saying. But like, that's the thing. Like. There is nothing like before Star Wars. What was he a director and animator on? Avatar: Last Airbender. 
w- widely regarded as one of the greatest animated series to ever exist. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, listen, I'm just... I'm just... I it, guess it's one I, of those things that I don't think he could lose. Good, no. Yeah, I mean, and that's one of those things, like, yeah, you hype it up, and if it happens, it's like, oh, no, the fall of mankind. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm but, just saying, I, I just wanted to, like, you know... Listen, I want it to be great. I want everything to work out. And it has been, right? I just don't want it to be like, you know, you're like, oh, we're going to see Thor Love and Thunder. And you're like, why did we watch that movie? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just like, it's just something like that. But I don't, like you said, I don't think they can do wrong as long as they keep that same trajectory of how they're doing it. And like yeah. I said, like, uh, Ahsoka is coming out in August, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, what's in between that? Because I know there was like, what's the when's the acolyte coming out? Not soon. Okay, so Maybe that's that's something that's in the future. Okay, yeah, because yeah, there's uh, uh, what is it? Se- so, Tales um, of the Jedi. No, so I'm the gonna... twenty first. No, so first we have the twenty eighth with um um the new game Jedi Survivor. Yeah. Um, okay. That is that's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, to see what they do with Cal and kind of like who may or may not be tied in. Anyway, what, that's that. What and time then, frame is that uh, game going to take that, place in? Um, it's almost exactly lined up with Kenobi. So I think okay. it's like 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Okay. Okay. I think it's like 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. I think it's supposed to be like five years after the first game. So that's, I, that's where I think it kind of falls. Um, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, and then on May 4th, we're getting the second season of Star Wars Visions. Um, and again, that doesn't necessarily, that if it continues the way it did in the first season, which was awesome, um, it's not going to tie into anything. It's just going to be its own, a bunch of um, different animation studios doing mm-hmm. their own star, little Star Wars stories. And it was awesome. So those will be really fun to watch. Um, but that is, um, in terms of kind of like the next... Canon show whatever it's going to be Ahsoka in August. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. and unless for some reason they decide to put Skeleton Crew out sooner than they do, we on. do we know if that's going to be Wednesdays? Just like, uh, yeah, just okay. So I'm gonna just let everybody I know. I assume Wednesdays because that seems to be what they've been doing for everything now. So mm-hmm. this is this is going forward. We are going to have episodes of the show talking about Ahsoka the night of its premiere. So, like, let's just say it comes out Thursdays. Thursday at 9 p.m., we're going to have a show. Uh, It depends on, you know, if we're having a weekly or whatnot, but it's going to be within a day or two of it. We're not Mm -hmm. waiting until Monday to do it. Monday's show is going to be... More about if we go see a movie on the weekend or something happens over the weekend, we're going to recap that stuff. But the shows, the new, the the shows are going to be um, done right away so that we can get content out for, for people that are uh, like fresh, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Good idea. All right, so I'm gonna talk my way through eight real quick. Yeah, yeah, go <laughs> go for it. So. Uh, what's it called? They're retreating, retreating, they run out. Okay, this was super early on in the episode, and it's really easy for something like this to fall under the rug. But um, when they're like, oh, we can hide out in this cave, and they go in that cave. When I saw grass, yeah, mm-hmm. that was like, I was like, I, I wasn't sure. Like, I genuinely wasn't sure if I was seeing it wrong at first. I know that sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but it could have been green reflective rocks. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, but basically what I, so the, the context with that is the planet of Mandalore has experienced so much war in its lifetime that like all of the land was thought to basically just be like unusable, um, in Clone Wars, in Rebels, and even some decent amount before that, like the only populace on Mandalore was domed cities across the planet. Mm -hmm. So the actual surface of the planet was like, just not even regarded as useful. And so seeing it just being like, oh, yeah, like this is like, you know, we cultivated it, you know, to, to, to help it to grow. But like to see that is like, okay, so they plan on like 
doing more with this. Right, yeah. So that in its own is a really little small thing. I was like, that is very cool. Um, so that I was really, really excited to see because um, it almost it, it kind of just like guarantees we're going to see more of this. Otherwise, it's just like, oh, you know, theoretically, Mandalore just got better. Yeah. Um, so that was really, really cool to see. That was awesome. Um, I think the whole axe wolves shooting up in and like getting everyone out. Okay, everyone comes down. Like I even love kind of the concept and the way that they did that. It's like, okay, like, you know, they have enforcers and bombers. We cannot beat them in the air. Bring everyone down. This is where we're going to have to take the fight. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure like if wolves is going to do his whole go down with the ship thing. I'm like, you know, you just kind of park it where you wanted to go and then you dip and he did. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but just bringing everyone back down that way was mm, stellar um, the whole um, kind of like clash with uh, the Imperials and, and the Mandalorians coming down like you know via jetpack was actually done very well because you could follow it you could see what was happening it wasn't like super chaotic and like, oh, you know, okay, well, things are blown up and people are getting shot. You could like see, you could see the the the, the interactions. You know, you could see um, Bo with the uh, with the dark saber. You could see the armor. You could actually see their like fluid movements and how they're actually moving and fighting with the jet. So they yeah. just did a really really yeah, good they... job of making it look good, but also like we could follow it. Yeah. yeah, they they did so well with that. What was going on? Yeah. Um, in, in a world where there's like super terrible CGI and things like that, that they just a lot of times do fast cuts and things. The yeah. fact that you could make out the movements in the fight, that yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, I, I was like, okay, thank you, because that definitely could have been that. That definitely could have. It, it's that's hard to do. Yes. at least you would assume from mm -hmm. you know what we typically would see. And that's a big part of Mandalorian fighting, too, is being able to fight in the yeah, air. It is. Yeah, it is. Um, and then the whole thing with Moff Gideon's clones, I think that that was a really, really good move. Mm -hmm. I think that was really smart that they did that. Because with the Shadow Council, you know, they had Hux, and he's like, you know, he's in charge of Project Necromancer. Oh, man, what could that be, right? Mm -hmm. um, Reviving Jar Jar. Of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, you know, Gideon writes it off as like, you know, whatever, cloning is your thing or whatever. But basically to do that, to separate Snoke from Gideon. Yeah, um, thank God they did that, yeah. Yeah, it separates Gideon and Snoke. Um, it gives more sense as to why they were going after Pershing and kind of just mm -hmm. trying to, like, you know, cut that off. Um, you know, it... it, 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 it um, see, it, it, it seals the whole story of, like, okay, why he was... Like, you, like I think Mike was saying, like why he wanted to go after Grogu in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think that the way that they did, did that was very smart um, to kind of like tie that part all together. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was good. You know, the fight scenes were great. I loved the, um, I, I loved the hallways. I, it's a hallway scene. Like they, mm -hmm. they typically go very well. Yeah. Um, the, the open the doors. Yeah, 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 door, um, yeah, R5 and the Ray Shields. Like, mm -hmm. That was that they did that very, very well. Um, that was great. Uh, I loved all of Grogu's in it. Like, they, oh man, they're doing such a good job of building that character. Yeah, just like in the different, like, okay, you know, we're seeing him become like, you know, he's 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 starting to really put some things together, really tap into the force, and be able to understand how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and have a good amount of control over it, but not even just control, but like you know, being able to use it and not just like blow himself out like yeah with the money. yeah um, and not use it emotionally too like oh i'm in the back in the corner i'm gonna yeah. like use it right he, he used it in a in a way that like it shows that he's starting to master it a little bit you know yeah he was taught yeah that was good um, yeah, that was a good touch mm -hmm. uh, uh the one thing i was i'm i'm interested to see what they're gonna do is um I, I like how they make made Gideon basically like a ball, like a like a final boss kind of. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> like you know, he took um, you know, he took Beskar and he essentially put like he had like basically like a cybernetic enhanced. He basically had an Iron Man suit. Well, yeah. that's what I was trying to figure uh, out like, when he was like yeah, grabbing like, you, you can, punches. Yeah, yeah, when he's grabbing, like you can hear it. Like 
yeah, the mechanical like the bit that like, yeah right. that they had in there that yeah. gives you the clue that that's not his, <laughs> his strength. That's something. That's something in there. There's there's gears or something turning that's making yeah. it so he's you know yeah he's grabbing her hand and crushing, but without the, those gears or whatever po- power he's got in there, yeah, you know, he's not doing that himself. Yeah, so he made like a Beskar Iron Man suit. Essentially, yeah. mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that was good. That's a badass suit. Too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah that was, they, ooh, they did it. Oh, yeah. Even the design of like the regular um, troopers with their Beskar, yeah. I was like, yeah. mm-hmm. they did a good job with that. Yeah, those are fire. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious yeah. to see what the future is in terms of the dark saber because they're not just going to throw that out. Um, the- theory, theory. Yeah. Wait, hold on. A reason. Wait, in where? How, how long are we in here? Forty-five minutes to first mention that. That's crazy that the the saber got destroyed. Say Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, we were we were trying to. Get spoilers, you know, yeah, later yeah. on. <laughs> hey, don't worry. 45 minutes later, <laughs> we're talking about it. Okay, yeah, no, no. But theory, that's a good point. I, think, I think they showed that, and I think there's a reason that they showed uh, Hugh Young, the, the lightsaber crafting droid. Ooh, that's good. In the Ahsoka trailer, you know, the, the, the Darksaber is destroyed, but who's got the schematics for all these lightsabers for thousands of years? Ooh. Guess who? You know? Ooh, that's good. That's good. Because I'm like, okay, you know, they still have the crystal. Oh, yeah, you just grab the, yeah. grab the kyber or whatever. You know how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's the hilt. Like, how many times does Anakin lose his lightsaber? Right, right, right. <laughs> just, um, Attack of the Clones, he's like, oh, Obi-Wan's going to kill me again. So, like, listen, we know how that works. Um, so... But that was really cool. Um, quick touch since we're on lightsabers, and you brought up Ahsoka. Um, I don't remember uh, her name, but like the female dark Jedi esque thing in the Ahsoka trailer, mm. she has Kanan's lightsaber. Oh. Really? Wait, she, Shin had it. She has. Wait, she what? Has Kan- Go back and look at that. She has Kanan's lightsaber. And if it's not, if it's not exactly like, then it's extremely, 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 extremely close. I'm I don't want to go off on too much of a yeah. tangent on that because <laughs> yeah. yeah. with that. But when we're on lightsabers, you're talking about Ahsoka. She has Kanan's lightsaber. Long story short, after Kanan dies, Thrawn ends up with his lightsaber, and there's some tie there, so it's possible that Thrawn gave it to her. Yeah. Anyway, I see. yeah. Okay. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, but yeah. So you know, like uh, even the so it's I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with that. But even just the um like. Bo being like Mandalorians are stronger together. Mm-hmm. Like that is not how it has gone for the past all we've seen of Mandalorian. Even even in episode seven, two dudes are fighting. Hey, yeah. you can't <laughs> it. That's a 1v1. Yep. And, and she's just like, hey, we're stronger together. So they gave them a character that, you know, because of his cybernetic enhancements or whatever, they weren't going to be able to solo him. So they're like, all right, well, yeah. They're yeah. all really cool wars. Just put them together. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. So yeah, that went that went real well. Uh, Grogu having his having his I am very good with the Force moment was awesome. Like that was mm-hmm. good. that was great. Can we touch uh, on that for a second? Just one second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Before we go, I Sorry, think- real quick. Holy shit, she does. If that's not Higginins, that is. It, that is the that closest is, replica to Kanan's lightsaber that, is, that it could possibly be. Exact lightsaber. We yeah, that is another episode. Like, I, yeah, I'm looking back and forth at like the action, like his lightsaber, like schematic, yep. and her in the trailer. It's that's the same lightsaber. Yep. Wow, yeah. Okay. okay. But now it's orange. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, same. Um, so Grogu here. We were <laughs> Jack and I. We talked about this. I know we talked about this another episode and maybe another show. Um. The timeline of Grogu, he's 50 years old in this. I was reading something to Jack about, you know, when he was born. Oh, and, I love that. Yeah. And, and this theory that him and Anakin were born at the same, in the same year or whatever. And that mm, they're sure like... They, theory. I think they... I'm pretty sure they were. Okay, so yeah. Mm-hmm. But the theory, the theory that people are saying is, like, the yin and the gang. Like, he was the chosen one. And because there's the one chosen one, there's the opposite a, a spectrum. But when they said the chosen one was born or whatever, 
people are saying, oh, it was Grogu. Obviously, with storyline, it doesn't make sense because, you know, the Chosen One was the one to bring down Palpatine. He ultimately bring down, brought down Palpatine, right? So, like, full circle. Listen, the, the Chosen One was to bring balance to the Force. And okay. when, when he, you know, Order 66 out all these Jedi, that, that brought some balance. <laughs> 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 oh, you know what before we get into anything else because of we just t- talked about order 66 i know i'm going off on a little tangent here dan <laughs> dan got very angry at me about uh i think it was episode two or three we were talking about the clones and how they're the greatest army ever assembled the greatest army in the galaxy or the universe and no one can beat them okay now dan an army of Mandos against your clone's greatest things ever. Who's winning? The clones. The clones. Okay. <laughs> I just, I wanted that on the record, okay? The clones are beating everybody. They're beating Jedis face to face. They're beating Mandos face to face. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jack, that's on if the record. You, if you're if you're taking the entire clone army versus these individual things, like like you're you're not first of all, you're not grasping the size of the clone army. Okay, okay, Dan. You're, right, you're not you're not sitting there, you're not you're not sitting there going like, oh, there's all of a sudden, you know, a, a couple million Mandalorians out of nowhere. Okay, okay. It has to be like the actual amount of Mandalorians okay, that there yes, are. Okay, yes. In sheer numbers, volume is always going to win wars, right? Because there's just more people to replenish. But I'm talking, if you take a sample size of 100,000 and 100,000, who's winning? There's it's, not 100,000 uh, Mandalorians or Jedis. <laughs> Okay, so, never mind. We're good. We're we're gonna, we're we're your your sample fun. size needs to be like like a hundred and a hundred. Okay, a hundred and a hundred, Dan. A hundred and a hundred. Who's winning? What are what are our factors here? <laughs> <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the bad batch involved? Oh my. God. Uh, okay. Anyway, see. Okay. See. This is why Dan walked away because I told anyway. him he's fraudulent. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. All right. All I right. So. Talking about Jar Jar Binks being. Uh, Jedi now and using force manipulation to change what he looks like. Well, th- th- that, <laughs> that this whole anyway. argument started. <laughs> What's it called? Anyways, I wasn't here when um, um, when when Keller and Beck came and like that's who was saved. Yeah. I think that was cool. Um, definitely not who anyone expected it to be. Um, but I think bringing having Keller and Beck in as that is cool. Um, you know, it leaves that storyline open of like, okay, where is he? What happened? What was the yeah. transition from getting him off Coruscant to where he is now? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah, but that was cool. That was cool. I mean, it, like, it even makes sense of, like, him being someone who survives Order 66, um, being, like, you know, the super, uh, you know, the nicknamed the Sabered Hand because he was just mm-hmm. really, really good. With, um, Master, Master of all lightsaber yeah. forms. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that's how that argument between me and Mike started was <laughs> I said it was really badass that, you know, what, this one Jedi, Keller and Beck, could get Grogu out when all these other Jedi were falling. And then Mike was like, it doesn't, it's not, that's like nothing. He's just like cutting through paper fighting these clones. They're, they're worthless. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, man. And like, they're, they're, they're supposedly <laughs> worthless, but they're mowing down everybody else. <laughs> that, that's a that's a sample size of what we got an argument about, but we're not going to get into it because yeah. that's on another episode. But anyway, yeah, he doesn't want me to leave again. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually do want you to leave. Actually, uh, but no, I think um, it, it, Jack, you hit it on the you know you hit it right there with the whole the, the battle. Like you, you sometimes you get lost in a battle, right? That last battle, and you're like, oh, there's a lot going on, so you can't like distinguish what's going on and this, that, the other, but like they did a really good job. So that just, that just going to translate to like, it, see when everything's good and great, like it, they have to continue that. Right. And I, I, I don't, I don't think they're not going to, I think they're going there. It's going to be great. I think Ahsoka's is going to be great. Um, I'm just, the only thing I'm worried about is like the announcements that they made. <laughs> Jack and I, Jack and I talked about this a little bit that they're going to continue the story of uh of ray right so when you know the if people's theories right like that 
at that time, Grogu is going to be someone that has to be in those movies, right? Like, what do we think about? Yeah, yeah. yeah, what do we think about that? At that point, he'd have to be. And we don't know, because, like, again, we don't, like, George Lucas has very specifically been like, yep, I'm not telling you anything about this species. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was a great move, because that gives them so much flexibility, because we don't know, like, okay, like, when he becomes, like, mature enough to this, or when he becomes this, or this, or that. Because, um, what's it called? Um, episode nine ends like, what is it like? Not even thirty years after the man, after where the Mandalorian is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not that far ahead. Yeah, and so it's just that if Grogu's still alive, you know, yeah, yeah. fingers crossed. <laughs> well, they they live a long time, right? So, well, they, they, they live a long time, but you know. There Everything's going guys. good. There can be tragedy. Well, you're right. Star Wars is a tragedy. Maybe yeah, you don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think. But, I don't think Grogu's dying. Yeah, I don't yeah, think but, so. Uh, uh, under, under the assumption that you know nothing kills him, he can obviously live long enough to, for sure, be as a character in yeah, I think, those I movies. Think will, if when they come out, he I could definitely. Yeah, do. yeah. So Jack, what I do think you- I think that's potentially where you could get like more talkative. Like yes. youngling Grogu. So let me start and with like he could be like an apprentice to her because the premise that they gave was it was going to be Ray rebuilding the the Jedi Order. Okay, that's, that's the premise they announced. That's not uh, where Grogu's going to be though. Right. So let's before we get there. He's a Mandalorian. Yeah. So before we well, get there, yeah. Tony, what do you think? Like, let's let's take a little minute just to think. Where do we think Grogu's going to fit in with the new like stories like going forward? Dan already kind of spilled his beans, right? What, what he thinks. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And I don't think don't do super hot take. Just do what you really yeah, think is going to happen. <laughs> um, what, what I think really is think this <laughs> what I think is going to happen is no. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I think they're going to do that uh, that Jedi Mandalorian um, thing. I think this is what I think. Just because it's fan service, is that there was a Mandalorian Jedi, right? Yeah. Back in the day, right? Marvel, I think. Right. So, mm-hmm. like, but they don't really play. Like, nobody really people know about it, but they don't. They're not. I don't think they're going to do a story on that particular character. I think they're going to use Grogu. They're taking like the best of both worlds, right? So they're taking um, the Yoda like species you can do anything with, right? And then you're taking like Mando is so hot right now, right? Like that. I think. Mando carry is like carrying Star Wars right now, I think. With just uh you had Ahsoka in there, you had Luke in there, you had mentions of Thrawn, you have that was uh, the book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Oh, was <laughs> it? Oh, sh- yeah. Yeah, but oh, the, okay. it, but continuation from yeah, yeah. right. Mando, Book of Boba, yeah, it's not like yeah. Right. So I, I I'm saying that they're like the whole Mando feels like carrying now, right? And I feel like if you if you want like I mean, maybe it's just capitalism or whatever, but if you want to capitalize on that kind of stuff, you do that that thing right. with him. So there. like a, you know a, I mean? a Mando Jedi type? Yeah. Like he's yeah, in I mean, that's, that's where it started. That's where the Darksaber started, was the first Mandalorian yeah. Jedi. Right. All right. Exactly. So, so when they Grogu, rebuild, Grogu could be the, the last Mandalorian right. Jedi. You they, know, when whatever. they rebuild the Darksaber, you know, uh, Mando, the Mandalorian, uh, the planet is going to be good. It's going to be like, you know, peaceful or whatever because the the new order, the first order is gone, right? Or whatever. And then. No, so because so, that's really what Bo wants to follow, like Satine's, like, yeah, peaceful right. Mandalore. Right, exactly. Yeah. So then you're going to have him take the Darksaber. And so you think he becomes he, the leader of the Mandos? I don't think they. Uh, well, uh, the Dark Sa- that that's, what, that's what the Darksaber. Oh, yeah, okay. but I don't think they honor that tradition because that's a warring tradition, right? So they go and yeah. when they're doing their peaceful thing, it's like, okay, you're going to be the protector of the Mandalorian because you can, pro- like, I mean, look at the last episode. He's protecting, you yeah. know, he, he can protect yeah. more than a Mando can, you know what and I mean? And one of the things that happened in episode eight that we didn't touch on that I think is going to go further than whether or not who has the Darksaber, if and when it gets rebuilt and whatnot. Is the Mythosaur. Oh my sure. God. When Grogu was there and, you know, Din's adopting him. Din Grogu, I freaking Din Grogu, yeah, you know, 
That's when he's adopting him, there's this, there's the little bit there where it cuts from like Grogu looking to the water, and it cuts to the Mythosaur. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And we already know that Grogu's got the affinity with animals, like you know, yeah, being yeah. able to calm them. You know, he, he did it with the ran- Rancor. You know, he could defeat these other giant beasts. Mm-hmm. If anything, that where it's going to be like, oh, Grogu's going to eventually become a leader type of thing. I think it's going to revolve around the Mythosaur. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a good take. take. That's a good take. Yeah. I mean, that's a good take. Oh, Your I other take is take. They're. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're really like. They're. They're really giving this man everything. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, are he's they giving really him ex- everything to take him down, though? Tragedy, right? Here, here's, here's, here's the take. I'm like, I'm like, realistic. The Mandalorian is How Grogu. How could they possibly do that? This is, this is my theory of what I think is going to happen. Mm. I think that... Hold on, hold on, hold on. To Jack's, to Jack's thing, what, uh, what do you mean by they're, they're giving, giving him everything? everything. Like okay. the Jedi thing he's wa- and the he's wildly force sensitive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, 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 he potentially gets a lightsaber. Yeah. Um, in the dark saber or even just whatever else, he is being trained as a Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By arguably one of the best By, fighting ones we've ever seen, with how yep. well Din Djarin can well, handle fight, fighting hallways worth of people with none of his weapons. Yeah. Right, it's funny because that's what what's his face was trying to do. It's funny how that that's working, right? Because like the, Moff Gideon was trying to get the armor, he was trying to get a clone with Jet because he knows right, that he that's was trying the to get all of his stuff or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's the heir apparent but, to like. But then they're potentially reinfor- like, like a little bit of a parallel. Like you know, you like obviously we were going to see the Myth Story, even if it was just that flash again. But like even just leaving those to get like, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, but this is that. Yeah. yeah. So my thing is, I think that's what we need to do because Star Wars is not just the Force anymore. It's Mandalorian. It's you know, it's these mythical creatures and these like. Oh, you know I'm just I mean? talking about like they're building a comically ridiculous house and like mm-hmm. it's almost it's it's almost like um what's it called um when in so in small tangent in Naruto when they wrote Madara. Kishimoto was like, yeah, I made him too strong. I actually don't know how to beat him. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You, like, you know how but, you beat Grogu? Is you make the Darth Jar Jar. And it, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, God. Well, what, it, what it is, is Grogu is that, that fan service character that someone yeah. made like 20 years ago where they're like, here's Yoda, but put him in Mandalorian got, armor. He's got, and, and, he's got, and he's got, and he's got uh, laser sharks. Yeah. <laughs> so let me, let me ask you this. How twisted would it be if – okay, hear me out here. In the new movies – and this is almost a hot take. Okay, let's say in the new movies, Mando gets destroyed again, and he's the only survivor, and it turns him dark because his whole thing was knocked out. And now Ray is rebuilding the Order, and he and is the – he's mm. – I'm not saying like dark side. I'm just saying like – you know, he's on the, he's in the gray, but he's like, you know, he's burnt, right? He's like the new Anakin and he keeps, you know, mm. like the tragedy arc, right? Like he had it all. He, he has, he set That's up for I everything. Like, I told you he's going to be the apprentice to Jar Jar. B- what the, I, I said this <laughs> no, years none ago. Of that crazy I said this stuff. Years ago. So I'm just saying, I think there's, there's one, there's two ways that they can do him, right? Like, he is like the Mando representative of rebuilding and helping the Jedi Order, and, and I like he, honestly, I don't think he's really gonna have anything to do with that. I don't think so. Either. No, I don't yeah, think I he's gonna. Either. I don't think he's gonna be in the Jedi Order. I think he's gonna be like an ally, right? Like, hey, we have no, a council. I don't think he has anything to do with Mandos too at this point. Now you're Watlin. Yeah, I think um, he's gonna be the leader oh, of the Mandos. Oh, he was adopted into a cult. <laughs> yeah, 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 he was a cult baby. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the, the Jedi is the biggest cult. I just oh, want to yeah, listen. <laughs> listen, if they're gonna take anyone good and turn them evil as a big bad, it's gonna be Ezra Bridger. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Ray. Because she's, yeah. Palpatine, no. she's Palpatine. It's it's it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be Ryan. it's gonna be Ezra's been stuck with Thrawn. It's it in in crazy. hyperspace for a while. He's already yeah. had the dips into the dark side right. as I'm Maul's apprentice. It, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, it's it, it's going to be Ray because it's Palpatine's bloodline. No, that's two. That's two. Like 
in your that's face. Obvious. Yeah, that's too yeah. in your no, face. Dude, there's just dude, no uh, reason for it. If they do that, I'm just like. <laughs> What, what, but they showed sure. a little bit what, of it. They showed a little bit the of it. point of the first three movies? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Yeah. There was no point to those movies. Well, that's, I do she have a question. The I dark have a question. And she's like, she's like, hmm, maybe what, not. <laughs> what? What about the the guy that's in the the um in the games? The redhead guy there. Calcus. Yeah, is he gonna? It, where's that timeline again? Uh, it's so this next game is pretty much right next to um Kenobi. So it's. Like ten years or so after Revenge of the Sith. Okay, so this so is sli- that- slightly before Mandalorian. Okay, so no, this guy could show up. Uh, yeah, this guy could show up in the series, right? As an wow, well, there's yeah. a there's a meme picture of him with uh, Grogu. Like, yeah. just <laughs> I showed Jack the other day. I'm like, yeah, look at this. <laughs> it's like it's just a meme, but like it's a good picture, you know. So yeah, I mean, these things, you know, it's, uh, there's going to be loose ends that are going to be tied up, right? And like. We're going to be like, listen, we need the, we need these characters to interact at some point, right? I mean, we understand that it's a huge universe, but, like, these these guys are going to no, come. I mean, they, just pull, they just be pulling the trigger sometimes. Like, the, I still have a hard, like, I still have a hard time getting, like, they had Luke and Ahsoka mm-hmm. killing. Yeah. Yeah. There is so much to unpack there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is so much to unpack there. They were talking to each other, you know, like they had no, already known each other. Mm-hmm. I am waiting for that <laughs> yeah. first interaction. Yeah. I am waiting yeah. for that first interaction. There's so much. There's, oh my God. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, but I say that to say, like, they sometimes be putting people together, like, I, forever. Mm-hmm. As soon as Ahsoka was on the scene, everyone started liking her, like, oh, wow, like, What's that interaction with Luke going to be like? Blah blah, and they just they just kind of like, they gave us a taste. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I I've been waiting for them to put Cal Kestis and more stuff. I think letting I think having the games separate to kind of flesh out his character a little more to so he himself can be a character and not just kind of like fall in yeah, fall with in, all yeah. of the other billion characters. <laughs> I think that's smart. I think they're going to bring him in eventually for some stuff. What I think Star Wars has done a very very good job is not um making it all a very marvel thing where everything has to tie together and you yeah. have to see every single character on the screen at the same time yeah like, well, we, we do love that though don't we it is cool when it happens <laughs> but realistically it is going to be better if it's not like listen they can all interact at different times but it just doesn't make sense for it all to be on the same screen. I, and I think they do a very, very good job. Of yeah, that. unless they're unless they're a council, right? But see, a council. but see, I agree with that because now you expect every Marvel movie to have like that kind of ensemble, right? Like you expect every Marvel no, movie. No, I know everybody ensemble. does. Multiverse of, multiverse of madness. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, on. yeah. yeah. I, expected see, I expected to see Thrawn in Multiverse. <laughs> <Madness. laughs> I, you did. I did see him. Oh, like, man. I saw Jar Jar too. Oh man, no, that's the thing though. Like, like when you watch these movies, like Quantum Manium, right? You're like, yeah, this was cool, and there was story building on this, but like, you're they're putting these other movies on other planets or other planes of existence, so you don't have to have the Avengers in every movie. And I, I get that with Star Wars, right? You. Don't, once you put them all together, like as main stories, then it's going to be hard to like separate them. But I think Star Wars is such a vast. I mean, I, obviously the multiverse is a vast thing in in Marvel, but like I think in Star Wars, like there's so much going on that you. I can't, think part of what Star Wars has in that sense is the timeline. Yes, yeah. Because Marvel is stacked on top of each other, and the furthest the furthest separation you have for Marvel stuff. Is going back to what is it, World War Two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Whereas opposed to we have where we are now, and then when the movies and stuff on the High Republic comes out, that's like oh I don't know, ten thousand years ago. Right, exactly. So yeah. there's a there's a much bigger timeline for you're right. Spread out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you're like Wolverine was in War War Two, and so was uh, Captain America. <laughs> like why are they? <laughs> where was he? Where yeah, was yeah, he? yeah, exactly. Where was Deadpool? <laughs> you know, it's like come on. Why? Why don't we see Qui Gon Jinn in the High Republic? Um, because he's born in eight thousand years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, although, no. although speaking of their ability to do flashbacks and stuff, the Ahsoka show, Hayden Christensen, 
Mm. Oh my gosh! Flashbacks with with oh, Anakin and Young we Ahsoka. Gonna get, we're gonna get Anakin versus Young Ahsoka on Mustaf. I'll tell you that oh, right now. Yeah, God. especially yeah. have you seen yeah. the Ahsoka. the actress they cast to play the Young Ahsoka? Perfect. Mm-hmm. A- absolutely perfect. perfect. Like the perfect age for like that. Like like Clone Wars Rebels era oh, Ahsoka. My gosh, I am going to lose my mind when that show comes out. Oh, because they've yep. hinted so much at the world between worlds. They've hinted mm-hmm. so much at, at um, you know, like, oh, what if Ahsoka stayed with the Jedi Order? Ahsoka has to go fight Anakin on Mustafar. What happens there? And I'm just like, oh. Mm-hmm. oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, and what I want, what I want, what I've been so waiting Dave Filoni for. Dave Filoni wrote every episode of Ahsoka. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. What I've been waiting for is just that moment, just that moment where Ahsoka learns, sees, feels, whatever, Anakin Skywalker come back. Mm -hmm. For all of five minutes, I just need to see that moment. I need her (laughs) to have that. I I love this character, and I just need her to have this closure. Yeah. Whether she sees it through the world between worlds, whether they show – um, you know, where she is and how she kind of understands and feels that, but I need that moment. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah. it's, maybe it's just not, not, <laughs> yo, not even world between worlds. She doesn't give us give us force ghost Anakin appearing to her after. Oh, talk about fan service. Like, <laughs> no, I don't know about that. I, I want that's what Dan wants. Like, That's his wish list. Like I'll take, like I'll take that eventually, but not as kind of like the oh hey I'm back. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but even if it's just like she meets Luke and Luke tells her, I'm like just I need to. Uh, nah, she meets Luke. To Luke tells her, and then Force Ghost Anakin appears. Oh, like, like 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 <laughs> over her shoulder. <laughs> Hello, my children. Um, hey, uh, hey, look, it's my it's my two kids. Don't you have Leia? Hey, look, it's my two kids. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have a daughter. I do have a daughter. I've always had a daughter. I've always had a daughter. Nah, man, her name's like, Ahsoka. He's like six years older than her, if that. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I just, I just need whatever that's gonna look like. Um, what in my like, I've always, always wanted more. Uh, and again, like this was episode six came out X amount of years ago. Like, obviously, there's only so much they're gonna be able to do with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but just like more of kind of what they did with Ray when they have like, you know, all the past, whatever talking to her head, like, like, you know, when he sees Luke, like, you know, he's thinking about more than Luke in that moment. Like, obviously, you know, that's his son. That's this, this, that, and the third, but he's got all the other stuff back there too. Like, I want to hear Ahsoka in his head, but that's, that's, that's beside that. Ahsoka is going, that, that show is going to make me lose my mind up in here. (laughs) Up in here. (laughs) Guess what? We're going to do, we're, we're doing the show. On the same day that the show comes out, so we can get all everything out, and then it can be like you know people can watch it over the week. Because, like I said, if we wait until Monday, you lose like the the up in here. <laughs> yeah, in here. exactly. Anyway, uh, I think we covered pre- pretty much everything. I mean, we got to the next point, which is the next show for us is Ahsoka. Um, I think we had pretty good takes. Okay, Dan, we can do a little thing on uh, visions. Yeah, yeah, we will. We will. Um, but I think, uh, I mean, Mando's good. We're going to have to wait a whole nother year, but you know, hopefully, uh, you know, it, 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 these other shows right, real will quick, definitely, real, yeah, go ahead. Quick. Uh, Mario one through 10. <laughs> Just end the show. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, you know what? Let's start with Jack and Mario. Listen, that movie was exactly what everyone should have expected. If you went into that movie expecting anything different, you did not like it. A hundred percent. I agree with that. But that was exactly what it should have been. Like, I agree. You know, great great for kids to be like, oh, wow, this is Mario. Like, and maybe, you know, so I'm getting introduced to him for the first time. Oh, in a movie, that's different, whatever. Mm-hmm. But listen, for people who know Mario, who grew up playing games and stuff like that, like, we, I went to the movie to see, to hear Luigi's ringtone be the GameCube startup sound. <laughs> I went to the movie to see Mario eating in a diner with a punch out game next to him, with yeah. him to have an R wing on his TV. Like, that's, that's what we went for to see all those little things there. So, yeah. in that sense, I think they did exactly what they needed to do. 
Yeah. I did I didn't know that I went to the movie for this, but the main thing that I got out of the movie was Lumily. There is no escape. The only yeah, hope is the sweet girl. relief of death. Cause like like same. <laughs> like yeah. Oh my god. Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. All right, I love so, that character. So, I so, love so her so much. That was so funny. So, I love that character, and it's even funnier when you find out like it's the director's like like seven year old daughter. <laughs> the voice. Like he's like, come on, come on, honey. Tell, <laughs> tell the not, people about the sweet wrong. relief of death. That's wrong. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's wrong. Um, so yeah, let's just get numbers real quick. Uh, Dan, why don't you start? Or actually, you know what, Jack, you give us number one out of ten. I don't even know if I have a number. I'm just like, it's what it was supposed to be. That's my number. Okay, yep. Dan. Uh, the number is uh, how how many times uh, Jack Black said peaches <laughs> in that song. That's that's the number I got for it. Just right. count, count the peaches. All right, t- Tony. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I went to go see it. Uh, Tony and I we saw it with my kids. Uh, Dieter, it was like his. You know, he's gone to the movies before, but Annalise, my daughter. That was her first movie ever, and Mm -hmm. this is how I judged the movie. She sat through the whole movie, and she has ants in her pants. So the fact that she sat through the whole movie, engaged in Mm -hmm. it, and then I Mm -hmm. asked her afterwards what it was, and I said, Hey, Annalise, if you had to give that 1 out of 10, 10 being the best, and and she said 11, and I said, Oh, why? And she said, Because Princess Peach is awesome. That's exactly why the movie was made, right? So okay, yeah, perfect. no, I, yeah, yep. So it, it, it hit its target audience with what it needed to do. Exactly, and I then I asked Dieter, "What do you?" I said, "Oh, d- did you like the movie?" He said, "I love it. I want to go see it again." I said, "Well, we're not mm. doing that, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but when it comes out on video." <laughs> well, but, he also we also said we asked him, "What was your favorite part of the movie?" You know? Yeah, and 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 he said. When Bowser destroyed the um, the, the little penguin, the little penguin so, guys. Yeah, he loved Bowser. He loves his favorite character is Dry Bones Bowser. So Jack Black did an amazing job with Bowser. It made Dieter appreciate and love Bowser even more. He said it was a ten out of a ten. So okay, yeah, that's exactly. Dieter D- 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 likes Bowser. You know, your daughter likes it's Princess nice. Peach. Yep. Yeah, no, it, it hit its target it's, audience, it hit its mark. That's, what, that's exactly I, what Jack I said. I can't be mad at that. It I can't did, be mad at that. It did its job, right? And that's yeah. uh, that's what it was made for. That's, now, yeah, that's what it's going for. It's for me, for the kids, and, give them their, their on, stuff, a more, yeah. on a more personal thing, so when Mike and I used to play uh, Mario, like back in the day, Mike would be Mario and I'd be Luigi, and it was like the brother thing, right? So when mm-hmm. they're like got each other's backs and like you know they get separated, but you then they come up a back. Little bit. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was yeah, a good yeah, feeling, yeah, you know, because yeah. I mean? because you could never play that two player. Remember back in the day? Well, <laughs> yeah, Jack, yeah. Jack doesn't remember <laughs> too much of that, but yeah, you got the, your little CRT and you got one controller. You got this past the controller back and forth and stuff like you that. You never got to play the Ouija either. It was always Mario until yep. Super uh, Super Three, yeah, or two, I guess two, but two is like Dream World stuff. So. But yeah, no, <laughs> two wasn't a real Mario game. But no, I think the movie did what it needed to. do. This is the the only thing that it got me was when they were doing the commercial at the beginning and the voices were like, so I'm like, yes, they're, they did it. And then they they Rick rolled us and they were like, mm-hmm. oh, and I was like, you, I, saw, I was like, oh, I'm about to walk out. I swear to God, I'll leave Dieter and I'll leave here. I don't care. Like, but no, I think it, it did its job. The story was done well for its target audience. And it paid homage to the guys that played the game and did the things, right? Like they did the mm-hmm. – I liked when they were running through the, the city, right? And they, they did like that side-scroller oh, that thing. Really, that was really Yeah, good. it matches yeah. up with World 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and then you, he jumped yeah. on the pipe and the thing. Awesome. Like, it, yeah, it, it, it was the movie. It was made for kids, and it had like the little things in for the parents that went and see. It did its job. It, like, right. It's the type of thing. It's like any Disney movie. You can't really be mad at a Disney movie whether you like it or not Yeah. because it's made for the kids. Yeah, it might have some stuff in there for adults, or it might be just an overall good movie that you enjoy too, but you know, you're not the target audience, but it worked for its target yeah. audience. And, right, exactly. and so, the, the fire donkey. That was awesome. Like. <laughs> That I mean, I'm no, down with the was, firepower. Yeah, that was cool. No Yoshi. Sorry, I mean, herds of Yoshi. Right. 
I gotta I gotta get to bed, but yeah, I just wanted to get your guys' feel on that. Uh, yeah, because no. that's typically a movie we all go see together. You know, you know, like kind of L- like. Listen, there was there was a Yoshi. Eh. It was it was Godzilla at the end of the movie. Mm, yeah. So anyway, about that. But yeah, no, it, it, the Smash Cinematic Universe. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, once they start the Smash Bros. Uh, you know, multiverse thing here, and Sonic's introduced. Oh, it's and coming. Stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but real talk, a Legend of Zelda movie would be insane. A Star mm-hmm. Fox movie wait, would wait. go crazy. Okay, now, Legend of Zelda, like, a live action or, like, the cin- no. like cinematic like this? Either. I'm afraid <laughs> of how Either bad way. they could make a live action. Yeah. That's yeah. The issue. Yeah. Yeah. I would prefer it animated. I feel like if done, like, flawlessly, it would really just be one of the greatest movies time well if they ever do it way too much risk yeah if they ever do a smash brothers live uh thing we can have alex try out for uh luke uh what's the the lucas luke what's the (laughs) other one there the ness Ness. Ness. he can be ness that'd be a good little casting you know and the and and I, i just want one more thing out of the mario movie jack since you're a donkey lover what what did you think of seth seth Please don't call me that ever again. <laughs> Donkey sorry. Kong. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. Please don't call me that ever again. No, I'm the monkey. I'm sorry, Jack. Uh, uh, listen, first of all, I hate that character. Second of all, <laughs> everyone, be, everyone be smoking Seth Rogen. I'm like, bro, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Seth so Rogen is like, the real not, life Donkey Kong. You know, it's, it's, not, not, it's not Seth Rogen's fault that they wrote Donkey Kong like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was a side character at best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's like a, that's a main character with the side character energy. He got Diddy Konged. You know, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like the way that Diddy Kong got the way that Diddy Kong got treated in Donkey Kong scene is how Donkey Kong got treated in the Mario movie. Yeah, that's true. All right. that's <laughs> Shut true. up, Donkey Kong. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome. I think this was an awesome show. I think it was. We hey, we know we we actually know who, uh, what our dad can cosplay now. Though he can be Cranky Kong because <laughs> yeah, he's cranky as shit all the time. So uh-huh. but, yeah. All right. Awesome show. Um, next show we're gonna. Uh, what do we have to talk about? We gotta fig- We gotta find something. Um, John Wick Four. Let's go see. Oh yeah, we can't mm. talk about that. <laughs> um, Dungeons but- and Dragons. Go and see it. Mm, pass. Uh, kill someone with everything in the room. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, guys. Uh, have a good night. Uh, this is going to be up in tomorrow. So, um, <laughs> all right. Good show, guys. Later. Yeah.